before you can ship products using shopping cart elite and actually generating labels you need to set up the boxes that you will be using we highly recommend you find out the exact size of the boxes and if it's not possible because you may be using a remote location to ship from you may want to just come as close as possible to predict it now one of the main reasons why you want to set up the boxes is because if you're able to tell us what box you are willing to pack into then you can mark all of your different products that can ship together and mark them that we can combine the items and combine the boxes in one shipment and then shopping cart elite can predict how to fit in the box and if it can even fit in the box and do all that calculation automatically so here is how you would set up the boxes first you would go to orders and suppliers and if you are your own supplier then you would add yourself in here then you would select the supplier and click on warehouses so you want to set up a warehouse the first one and you can set up multiple warehouses so if you actually have different locations that you can ship from then you want to define all those locations and all the boxes that those locations use now in addition if you want to have shopping cart elite automatically tell you which warehouse and which box to ship from based on the inventory levels and the customer location then you definitely need to set up multiple warehouses and the boxes that they use for the supplier that sells the same item so we're gonna go ahead and add warehouse A and now we're gonna add the shipping boxes now here's how the shipping boxes work first you can call this box one and if you have any kind of handling fee to handle this box you could set the price for it which will be passed on to the customer the inventory product is to map the boxes from your inventory so you actually create the different boxes that you use in the system make them hidden from the website and then map the box to the inventory this way you can populate the inventory levels on shopping cart lead and we can see which box you even have available to see if we can use it or not then you can mark it if residence is allowed so the way the website will know about this is if you are going to say that residence is not allowed then this box will only be used if the company address is provided on the shipping address otherwise this box will not be used so you want to provide outside dimensions and you also could provide the maximum weight that that box can handle usually in every box on the bottom of it it declares what is the maximum weight that the box can handle and we recommend that you follow those guidelines so let's say 100 pounds now the inner dimension might be smaller than the outer dimension so the outer dimension is what we will tell UPS the boxes for the inner dimensions this is how we're gonna know how to pack it so for example if you're gonna be padding the size of the box and you're gonna provide half an inch on each side that means that you might have one inch of padding all around which means the inner dimension is actually less than 24 inches and it's very important that you provide the accurate dimensions because when we're gonna do the bin packing it really goes down to the millimeter to see if it's gonna fit or not so I'm gonna just say you know 23 inches 17 and 2 and the padding weighs like 0.5 or you can put 0.3 now the next thing you want to do is you want to tell us what service this box can be shipped with so for example you can say that I'm willing to ship this box with UPS or USPS or FedEx now the reason why this is important because let's say you get UPS label boxes so the box actually says UPS UPS forbids you to ship that box with USPS and vice versa USPS does not want you to use UPS in fact uh, if you bring a UPS box with a UPS label to USPS they will refuse to ship it in most cases so you can specify what service this box is allowed to be shipped with in addition 
let's say this particular box, and this mainly applies with USPS. So some USPS has flat rate boxes. So you can put anything you want in it. And as long as it's in US, it doesn't matter how much it weighs, doesn't matter what dimensions, they'll charge you, you know, 9.95 or whatever that amount is. So what you do here is you can say, this is my flat rate cost for the box, which means that once this is selected and we can fit everything into this box, we're going to present to the customer that, hey, you can ship it using a flat rate USPS box, and obviously you can call it whatever you want. It's going to be 9.95, so we're not even going to ask USPS for a live rate at this point. We're going to strictly use this amount, and that's it. Keep in mind that if you do end up using the flat rate cost and you end up selecting USPS ground, USPS next day, that means that the customer will be presented. Do you want to ship with ground or next day and it's still going to be $9.95? So be careful what you select when you do flat rate cost because the flat rate cost applies to the whole box. It does not apply to only specific services, which means that if you're going to do USPS, and you want to do flat rate, then you're going to say, okay, this one is $9.95, you're going to save it, then you're going to create a second box, which will not have a flat rate cost on it. So this is how you set up the boxes. What you want to do, once you've set everything up, you want to go to Manage Products, and you want to make sure that the products that you're willing to ship in those boxes have combinable and consolidatable checkmarked. So if we go to shipping, you have these two check marks here. Combinable means you can combine items, and consolidatable means you can combine boxes. They both mean the same thing, so these two check marks must be selected. And if you want to select them in bulk, you could simply just select all and do a bulk quick edit, and you can just select them in bulk. In addition, you want to make sure that all the services you're willing to use for these shipments are selected properly, as well as the supplier. So once you select the supplier, make sure it says any warehouse instead of a specific warehouse, unless you have any reason to have a specific warehouse assigned to it. When you have any warehouse, that means that once we estimate the shipping, we will estimate it based on the inventory that is closest to the customer. So if you have five different warehouses that have the same item, and we know how many items each warehouse has, then we will do a distance match between all the warehouses to see which price will be the cheapest and the fastest to deliver to the customer, and we'll present that to them automatically as long as you have any warehouse selected. So this is how you could set it up in bulk, and once you do that, then the bin packing is gonna work and it's gonna automatically predict how to combine all the items, and it's gonna give the competitive rate to the customer. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you actually ship it as well as see the diagram of how to pack it all together.